Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet again, and in this Cinema 4D video tutorial, I want to talk about the Intel Denoiser. Now, I should note that the Intel Denoiser has been introduced in Cinema 4D R21, so if you are using a version before that, uh, you won't get this option. With that said, let's uh, jump straight in. I'm going to need a subject to actually show how the denoiser works and the differences between your on and off basically. So let's go to window content browser and I'm just going to load the infinite realities man. So that's loaded up. Okay, great. I'm also going to uh, get rid of some of this and the protection tag on the camera and let's uh, just scooch this around like this. Okay, cool. Good stuff. Okay. So the denoiser, it actually works with uh, all of our, renderers that are included in Cinema 4D. So that's Pro Render, Standard Render, and the Physical Render. Let's deal with uh let's deal with Pro Render first. Okay. So in my Pro Render settings, I'm going to actually lower the iteration count so the quality of our image is going to be really, really bad. Um, if I render now a uh, hundred iterations, uh I'll do that just so you can see what kind of result we get and I'll also speed up the render for the video as well. Okay so that's the render done at a hundred iteration count. I haven't messed with any other settings either and you can see that it's massively grainy around here. You also notice that the uh, you're wondering where the texture's gone and that's because in Pro Render it has to use the um, PBR uh, workflow where the texture is actually in the reflection uh, of our material and this actually isn't a PBR material, this is just, uh, we're using the color channel and that's why the texture's missing. But for this tutorial, that doesn't matter. I just wanted to show you the amount of grain that we've got in this image. And in fact, let's uh, render out to our picture viewer. So I'm going to go into the output. Um, that's fine. Is it going to save? No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's render out to our picture viewer. Okay, so the render's complete, uh, and as before, we've got a load of grain in here. We've also got a load of fireflies as well underneath his chin. There's not enough samples, um, you know, very, very grainy. So let's uh, enable our denoiser. So you go to Effect, Denoiser. It adds it to our stack and turns it on. And there's not very many options, to be honest. We've got Use Multi Passes um, and save the raw image on a separate layer. So basically what this means is that we can actually save a version of our image uh, on a multi-pass layer that has the denoiser applied and there'll be one that doesn't. So you can have both and maybe you can mix them in post and you can really uh, control the, the subtlety of the smoothing. But for this, I'm just gonna leave everything as is. The denoise is on, so let's render out again. Okay, our render's done, and as you can see, all of that grain has been eliminated and smoothed out. Um, so let's compare the two. That's before, this is after. One thing you will note, that some of this detail around the mouth um, and sort of the shadows under the eyes does get smoothed out. So it is a bit of a balancing act, but I think you'll agree that it's largely done a great job. Um, but what you should note is that this isn't a magic bullet. Um, in fact, let's make these A and B. So we'll call that A, we'll call that B, and now we can actually see the difference. Yeah, it's not done a bad job at all, really. Um, but like I said, this isn't a magic bullet. Uh, for stills, it's absolutely fine. But when you're dealing with animation, especially if you've got global illumination involved, um, you might see some flickering. Uh, so you've got a it's like a balancing act between the amount of samples you're using and the denoiser. So you don't want a, the denoiser doing too much of the work, but um, if it's doing some of the work, you can lower your samples uh, slightly so you can balance between the two and you should be able to get a happy medium between them. But in this case, for this still, it's done an absolutely wonderful job. Okay, so that's Pro Render. Let's have a look at the physical render. So let's turn it over to physical. The denoise is still in there, so we'll turn it off for now. And um, 
we'll close this and we'll we'll take a sort of control image. Now I've got a feeling that this render is going to be pretty high quality anyway, which it is. So that looks all all good, to be fair. Um, there's nothing to really denoise or clean up. Uh, so let's. I'm going to make this image way worse, and I'm going to do that on purpose as well. So let's turn all of this stuff down to zero, and let's change this adaptive to progressive. Uh, twirl down the sampler, and we'll um, change this to a pass count and give it one pass. So the quality of this should be pretty bad now. So let's uh, let's render that out. And that is our render done. And as you can see, there's not enough samples because uh, we've got all this noise on the edge of his head here, a load of noise around his ear. We've even got black spots under his eyes and stuff. The shadow's not being handled very well, especially around, around the edge. Uh, we've got a few f specks and it's just not very good quality at all really so that's exactly what i was looking for i wanted to bring the samples right down and the reason i wanted to do that is because it might not be evident for you guys on the video so i just wanted to make it really clear okay so now that's done let's turn our denoiser on in the physical render and you'll notice that we've got uh, slightly different options here uh, we've got an albedo pass right and this is to do with how the denoiser detects edges We've got a couple of object uh, options here, albedo and material color. And this relates to what type of materials you're using. So albedo relates to the, the color in a PBR workflow, which will be inside the reflectance channel. And the material color relates to, uh, let's open this up, relates to the actual color channel, which is not used in a uh, PBR workflow. In fact, if I create a uh, material new PBR material and open this up you'll see that the colors not checked on and you actually use the uh, layer color to get a full reflectance workflow and that's what this relates to this is how it detects edges and stuff like that as far as I understand anyway but in my tests I tried both and there's actually not too much difference between these two um, where it will matter is when you render out to a multi-pass so you can either have the albedo based or the color material color based one on a separate uh, multi-pass as before you can save the raw image on a separate layer so you can have the the noisy original image on its own multi-pass layer and you can have the uh, one with the denoiser post effect uh, on it and that's basically what it is it is a post effect when we use in physical because it basically renders your image and then applies the denoiser over the top. So it is like a post effect when using physical. Anyway, that said, uh, it's on. We don't have to mess with this really. And let's just render out. Now, as you can see, we've uh, finished our render. This, These edges are way, way smoother than they were before. If we zoom in, you can still see there's a little bit of, uh, you know, bumpiness going on. And that's because of what I did to the settings. Uh, you'd never, you'd never want to render out on settings as low as that. But I just wanted to uh, make the point, really. Um, so let's compare the two. That's what it was before, and that's with the denoiser. And I think you, you'll agree that even though it has smoothed out some of the details, it has done a fantastic job. Really good job. So, like I said. Um, where you want to use this is probably on still images. It can be used for animation and global illumination, but you've got just got to balance uh, your samples with the amount, uh, you know, your amount of samples with the denoiser on top. Uh, I'm going to do some further experiments with that. It looks like it should be really, really good at maybe getting rid of the noise you get in QMC global illumination renders. It's a brute force method, and it does tend to be grainy, so this could really help out. Uh, there. For my viewers on YouTube, please like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified of new tutorials. You can check out content at digitalmeet.uk where you can filter my tutorials by category and vote in the poll for upcoming tutorials. You can also follow me on social media, links in the description and the footer of my website. If you'd like to help support Digital Meet, this can be done via Patreon or the support page on the website. 
But if you want to help Digital Meat keep going and bag yourself some extra in-depth tutorial content, the Prime membership is available for purchase in the store. This will grant you access to the Prime membership area of the website. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.